Hello there, everybody. It's me, Waddles. Welcome back. Welcome. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're doing oh so swell. So that is about the only rhyme I know, but, but I know a lot about Minecraft farms. Today's video is called something like six must have 1.14 farms. Today we'll be going over six farms that you should definitely have in your survival world. Some of these farms are brand new farms that came around with the 1.14 update, and the other farms are older farms that have been revitalized and became more useful with the Minecraft 1.14 update. So as always, smash the like button, drop a sub, ring the bell, and let's get on to our list. So Minecraft 1.14 Village and Pillage. With a title like that, it only makes sense to start with a farm that is directly related to the title. Today's first farm is a Villager Breeder. The 1.14 update completely revamped Villagers and their surrounding mechanics. Villagers now have brand new trades, brand new mechanics, a brand new purpose, and unfortunately, brand new enemies. Now, more than ever, your villages are at risk of getting absolutely decimated and emptied. And obviously, that's not really a desirable thing. Villager breeders are now easier than ever to build. These things can easily supply you with more than enough villagers to restock your village that has been pillaged, give you a few villagers for a raid farm, enough villagers for an iron farm, enough villagers for a trading hall, so the benefits definitely by far outweigh the cons, or the building materials that you would need to set up one of these. As of Minecraft 1.14, gone are the days of confusing door mechanics, inside and outside mechanics, detector villager mechanics, it's all gone. For a villager breeder in Minecraft 1.14, all you need is villagers, beds, workstations, and food. That sounds like a really short list, but that's actually it. All the more reason to build one of these things. If you want a pillager or a raid farm, first you need villagers. If you want a trading home, you need villagers. If you'd like an iron farm, first you need villagers. If you're trying to create a village, villagers. I, I think I've said enough here. So farm number one, villager farm or villager breeder. Our next farm can actually be found right over here in my guide world. If you're a fan of the Minecraft guide series, you already probably saw this one coming, but farm number two is a sheep farm. You absolutely should set up a sheep farm in your survival world because, I mean, it's free building blocks, free colorful building blocks. And sheep farms are very easy to set up now too. All you need is a sheep, a dispenser, a tiny bit of redstone, and some shears, and you're pretty much good to go. Wool can be used in a variety of builds, from ships to colorful houses to small town stands. Or wool can of course be repurposed into other things like beds for your world and even banners for decorations on your other builds or for markers on your world maps. With how easy these things are to build and with how few materials they require to be built, there is certainly absolutely zero downside of building a sheep farm in your world. So, for the large amount of free blocks, a sheep farm sits at number two on our list today. Ah, so I'm back over into what is probably my first Let's Play world for the third farm on today's list. This was a farm that a lot of you guys probably didn't see coming. The third must-have 1.14 farm is none other than a spider farm, actually. Now, the spider farm could be a cave spider farm, or it could be a standard spider farm. All that we really need this farm for is the large amount of strings that this farm can supply you with. In Minecraft 1.14, strings can be used to make looms as well as scaffolding. Scaffolding is the big one here. Scaffolding is meant to be a block that assists you when you're building. If you need to tower up, if you need to tower to the left, to the right, well, you can use scaffolding for that. However, scaffolding also makes an amazing decoration piece. I mean, this thing looks like it was meant to be a table. Looms are crafted with two string and are used to customize banners. Now, admittedly, you won't really need a spider farm to create a loom or two, but you will need a spider farm to create plenty of scaffolding if you're trying to use this as building scaffolding. Of course, spider farms will also provide you with spider eyes and experience, which are also both good things to have, so that would be an added extra little benefit of having this farm. 
So if you're tired of using dirt or cobblestone as your pillaring block when you're trying to build big things, or if you'd like to make lots of looms, then you should probably consider making a spider farm inside of your world. You can do this with a cave spider spawner, a spider spawner, or even just a standard mob farm. And a uh, little shout out to any of you guys who remember this world right here. This was a fun one. And next on our list, we have none other than a bamboo farm at the fourth place on today's list. Bamboo is one of the newest farmable plants in Minecraft. The stuff is pretty easy to farm, both automatically or manually. If you're thinking about something automatic to farm your bamboo, try imagining something similar to a sugarcane farm. If you're going for something manual, all you'll really need is a sword. And that is because swords cut bamboo down, like, instantly, so... Uh, yeah, you don't really even need the whole automatic one. Now, when crafting, bamboo can be used for one of two things. You can either turn your bamboo into sticks, or when combined with string, you can craft scaffolding with bamboo. So a bamboo farm would really go hand in hand with a spider farm. I really need to get on a spider farm in my current survival world. Now, bamboo can also be used as furnace fuel, which is another great benefit of the stuff. If you decide to go the automatic route and combine your auto bamboo farm with an auto smelter, then you have a truly automatic auto smelter. Bamboo is certainly not the best source of fuel, but if you have a large scale farm like this one here, then the short burn time of bamboo shouldn't really matter because bamboo seems to grow quite fast as well. But you really wouldn't need something as large scale as this to make stuff work. Uh, you could definitely use a smaller model like this or something like this as well. If you're into animal collection, you're going to need some bamboo for your pandas as well. So there's another benefit of having bamboo. And that's not even mentioning the amazing decorational function of bamboo as well. So uh, spot number four on our list today is taken up by a bamboo farm. The next farm on today's list is most definitely more of an early game farm. If you set this up early on in your survival world, you'll get a lot more use out of it than you would if you built this once you're like fighting the dragon and things like that. The farm? Well, of course, that's gotta be a sweet berry bush farm. Sweet berries are a new food that was added in the 1.14 update. You can find these things in taiga biomes. The sweet berry is actually pretty common, so it shouldn't be all that hard to find as long as you can find a taiga biome. Set up something like what I have on screen here, and you're pretty much good to go. No water, no light needed. One of the big perks when it comes to sweet berries is the need for no water at all. That means you can set up a berry farm pretty much anywhere and need a grand total of zero buckets. That's really big early on. Sweet berries also seem to grow back faster than wheat, carrots, or potatoes, which is another thing that will make you very happy early on in your world. You really don't want to do too much of anything until you have a consistent food supply in your world, and with the sweet berry farm, you'll have consistent food in no time. If you're in more of a late game position, the sweet berry bushes make an absolutely wonderful looking decorational item. You can have these plants pretty much anywhere and everywhere, and they will add a whole lot of life to your world. Farm number five, a sweet berry bush farm. And last but not least on our list today is a pretty straightforward one. In the 1.14 update, you will most definitely want some sort of tree farm. This could be some random flat open piece of land where you plant saplings, or this could be something a little more fancy with a sapling collection system. And why do you want this? Well, for pretty much all of the new 1.14 workstation blocks. You'll need wood to make looms, barrels, smokers, cartography tables, fletching tables, smithing tables, campfires, lecterns, grindstones, just pretty much everything that's new. Admittedly, probably every single survival world already has a tree farm, but I figured you never know. With all of the returning players and new players coming to the game, I figured this would be a decent farm to put on today's list. And so that makes up six farms that you should definitely have in your survival world. What did you think? If there were to have been a seventh spot on today's list, what farm should it have been? Tell me in the comments down below. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video, make sure you drop a like. Remember to hit the sub button, turn the bell on so you get notified of my videos, and if you love what I do, check out my Patreon link or consider becoming a channel member. If you become a patron, you gain access to early content and the Danger Graph fan server. If you become a channel member, you get access to exclusive community posts and polls. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Waddles. Go have a good day. I will see you next time. Goodbye.